All right. <clears throat> so if you've taken the uh, the truck manifold far enough to where you know you're gonna cut it open, um, open up these ports like cross sectional area. You'll probably realize the way that you have to cut this in two pieces, um, and depending on the thick the thickness of your uh, cutoff wheel, um, you'll realize wait. You know, so how do I uh, stick this back together? And obviously, you can already see what's going on here. Um, and wonder, like, well, how am I going to weld that back? So I was experimenting with a couple of ideas. And actually, I, I was originally thinking of, like, doing this and then, um, you know, taking the welder. And the thing is, is I'm not running a legit aluminum welder. I'm just running it through my 120 flux core. Like I've seen other people do it. You just put a big 40,000 inch nozzle on it. Um, and then, you know, you can run like a flux core. So there's no gas, so it won't be, you know, structurally as strong as it could be. But I'm doing, this is going to be a combination of epoxy and aluminum weld. Um, so basically what's going on here is the best way to do this, and again, I had to use an angle grinder that had a relatively thick uh, wheel or disc. This isn't totally up as far as it could be. Luckily, you know, you have a couple of things here, like see how that could be higher up. Um, but then obviously what I did here is I just duct taped it. The plenum is upside down, resting on the pillars of cylinder heads I guess and uh, this way you can just kind of suspend it in the air and you could put a third one on um, then from there what I plan to do is do what I originally thought of in reverse order and it's funny because I got the idea from like I don't know I was looking at cream hardener for Bondo and they were doing a plumbing project on on the video and I don't know, someone took a piece of like filler metal or something and stuck it in this pipe hole and then they just filled the Bondo in. And I was like, wait a minute, like why am I, I keep thinking of starting with weld wire when if I could suspend this, what I could be doing is starting with a uh, fiber reinforced GB weld. And if you don't know what that is, that's just when you take aluminum shavings and you mix it up. So like for my uh, lower intake manifold that's how I don't have any examples here like well I guess whoops I just dumped out a bunch of aluminum shavings so here's like the last one that I did so actually on this EGR crossover pipe and this still needs to be shaved down it's way excessive but there was a hole in this crossover and you can you see the little shavings in there and this is kind of overkill, like that needs, that's kind of gummed up. This is actually extreme heat, so this is good to like a thousand degrees, but that was just to patch a little hole. Um, so what I plan to do is take a, the uh, JB Weld epoxy, again mixed with aluminum though, and what I'm going to do is this is suspended, especially, like obviously like I said, this gap isn't that big. Like that's huge, that's like an eighth of an inch. Um, so that, that closes in a little bit, but especially in the thick spots, what I'll do is gum up some epoxy in a bunch of points, like structural points, like at least four corners, and enough to where when it cures, like this could definitely take a bump. Like obviously JB Weld has a definite, decent amount of uh, PSI that it can take. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head, obviously it's not as strong as welding. But the thing is, the amount of vacuum that this is taking, really, like an intake plenum and the temperature, it should be fine, especially how thin it's actually structurally it's going to be. Uh, the nice thing about doing it that way, too, is at least when you only have one of the pieces on, you can kind of get behind there and see exactly how far it's going to smush in, like how much pressure to apply. Because obviously you don't want a ton hanging over, but honestly when that stuff cures, like it's not like it's just going to break off and get sucked into the engine. Like you would really have to have a weak spot. So, so that's what I plan to do is epoxy first, then I'll probably go around and make some welding lines. Um, you know, cause I don't know how well that flux core is really going to do. 
but obviously I do want metal on metal as well. And then when there's enough, when it's all stitched together, I will probably take another layer of epoxy, um, you know, maybe just like 16th of an inch or so to make sure that there's no air leaks or anything like that. And that's pretty much how I figured I'm going to do it. Um, but it was something that I ran into and in in the fir your first realization will be like, wait, like this is aluminum, no magnets are going to stick to it. I had like, I was like, maybe I could make something with suction cups that'll suspend this. And then I was like, well, why not just, you know, put duct tape on it. And this, like I said, you want this upside down, obviously, because this is loose enough to where it'll fall inward. Um, and you can kind of pull and stretch that out a bit. Um, and then as long as this is lined up properly and you get this set for a day with the weld and it's structurally secure, then you would take your other piece, obviously. And the gaps are large enough to where this is going to go right in uh, and kind of slide into place, hopefully. Um, and then, you know, just do the same thing with that. You would put duct tape on it, you know, tack it in with epoxy, and then you just go around. You know, here's a nice point for your ground lead. Uh, obviously, that needs to be... The paint needs to be taken off but you know you put your ground lead on, lead on start making some stitches some tacks and then just kind of filling in holes and then you know if that doesn't work so well i mean you could probably like honestly you could probably almost get away with using jb weld on this whole thing it would take a decent amount probably um but if you get the professional kit like that's probably enough I'm not going to do that, but I'm just saying I would probably trust it to hold that perfectly fine. Um, there's other ways you could do it. If you really wanted to make sure this wouldn't collapse, you could like tap a hole and, you know, somehow make a make metal braces that screw this on and then use epoxy to fill in for any air leaks if you didn't want to weld it. But uh, that's obviously that's a little extreme um but this way when it's all done you know i'll be able, i can grind it down repaint this you won't even know that this was ever cut open like i i don't know how far i'll go to really clean it up because i don't care uh but anyway that was just a little something i would i thought i would uh throw up on the on the channel in case you went nuts like i did and said you know what, let's cut this open and make this plenum uh flow as much as you really can. Um, also, here was a mistake. So I'll fill this in with epoxy because that gets pretty deep, but I didn't really know where this, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but there's kind of, this comes out more where this kind of reinforcement is or this bar and where you end up cutting the floor out of this because now there's no uh, partition or divider. There's like a thick piece, so just make sure if you haven't cut yet and you're going to that um, you do it like a good like almost a half inch below this thing or you're just gonna be cutting forever like it's really thick in there so because um, it really doesn't matter how you do it it's just you know like I'm sure that I mean I don't even remember how I really did this, like how, cause the, your wheel has to be really deep into the floor. <laughs> I guess watch the video where I'm cutting it. Maybe that kind of shows it. Like now my memory is kind of lost because you have to get the cutting wheel like that deep. So I'm trying to remember how it's done, but either way, I'm pretty sure the only way to really do this is in the two pieces. And this is how, you know, this is one idea to uh, hold it back. So. Cheap and simple duct tape saves the day.